Sydney's number one podcast, West Underground. On, Hello and welcome. welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we're here with Tom Whitcomb. Uh, welcome, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be here, thanks for having me. No worries, it, man. You could be one of the best looking comedians I've ever seen. I and appreciate that. smartly dressed comedians. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, fuck you, Pat Doherty. Yeah. Yeah. Always, <laughs> you like, scruffy, <laughs> slivering snake. <laughs> yeah, you, so the snake thing's come over here. Yeah, as well, yeah, has yeah. It? yeah. Apparently he did a gig with, uh, with Billy on the weekend because Billy started the snake thing mm. right for Pat Doherty and apparently it was like just three minutes of hissing to start <laughs> Pat's set cool. and he had to work through before they'd give him a, a moment to talk Hugh yeah. Hugh over there he's like Billy Darcy's number one fan are you really? yeah yeah. Right. he was like honestly when Billy was sat there Hugh was over there and he's just there like <laughs> <laughs> did you play fourth grade cricket? oh okay that seems to be his <laughs> Billy Billy absolutely fucking schooled him he was like oh he always, like he wants to put monster truck tyres on his little fucking shit car <laughs> and he, Billy was like I love it when people don't change the dream yeah, from when they're 8 years old it's a 7 year old's dream yeah, yeah. But- but uh, now, welcome, man. I uh, I I've seen you at the Comedy Untamed night. Oh, okay, cool. I watched it, there and you had a suit on, and you came on. And I thought, <sighs> you know, when you're somewhere with your missus, mm. right? And this is, it's a bit alarming when you've got like a handsome man in a suit telling jokes, right? Mm. It's not many situations anyone's better off in <laughs> than in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were hilarious, man. And then I seen you again there, not too long after. And then I've started uh, following you around. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thanks. hiding you know in the bush. You remind me of right, and this is this is like a like take this the right way because I you remind me of Buddy Holly. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's the glasses. It's the glasses, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's the hair, and yeah, I, okay. I think it's the it's the whole outfit. Don't you reckon, Jack? Like, like I thought you were going to say Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> well, I can see a little bit of that. <laughs> no, Peggy Sue. What do you do with Peggy Sue? I weren't expecting that. Yeah, no, I thought that's a nice comment. You know who you remember? 50s pop star or the replacement on Two and a Half Men. One of those two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, but it was more successful, Tom. What, Ashton Kutcher or uh, or Buddy Holly? Well, we're uh, still talking about Buddy Holly. In terms of, like, not dying in a plane crash or... Or legacy. Or legacy. <laughs> I reckon, uh, I reckon Ashton... Oh, what's Ashton Kutcher remembered for, though? Pumped? I think... the Butterfly effect. Butterfly effect. Um, um, for shagging Mila Kunis yes, as well. That's, that's a true. big one. What's that other goofy movie he's in? Like the chick comedy? Uh, uh, that was really dumb. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's dude, good. where's my car, dude? Where's yeah. my car? Yeah. <laughs> I watched hey, Zoolander the other night. That holds up. That movie's yeah. fantastic. That movie is good. <laughs> How are they supposed to... What's he say? How are they supposed to learn to read if they can't even fit in the building? <laughs> 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 it's so quotable. The one that I laughed at forever was uh, when he's having like the DNM, uh, when Owen Wilson and Ben still are having the DNM with the female reporter. Yeah. And, and they're asking why she hates male models. And she's like, well, growing up, I was, uh, I was always the fat kid. And Derek Zulander goes... Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so why male models? Yeah. It's a uh, that is a film that holds. You know the the scene where they're at the petrol station. Oh, and all, so funny. you make my dreams come <laughs> true. Every time I'm at the petrol station, I just think about it. Orange mocha frappuccino. Oh, <laughs> 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 I think I got the black lung. Every, t- every yeah, time I go onto like a like a constru- like a work site. Um, and and they like people are using the power tools and stuff like that. I feel like I'm gonna get the black lung now. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good film. Yeah. Very good film. What you know? What's like? I, I was I watched uh, Tropic Thunder not long ago. Oh yeah, mm. that was a very good film when I watched that. I've heard that really holds up too. I heard yeah. that's great. But yeah, that. It's the blackface thing in it, man. <laughs> I'm like Iron Man in blackface, eh? Like fucking. It's it's just how it 
how that gets okayed by like, because those studios, are, you know, pretty strict on things. Mm. Yeah. Well, they were after Harvey left, but like they started getting, you know, things getting passed in. But just like, eh. Do you, do you reckon it's because the blackface was so good? Yeah, like, I think so. so that, that's was, what I was gonna say. It, like, it's <laughs> it was. Good. He did a good job. It was, it was good. Unreal. Like when you yeah. first saw the photos of him, you're like, that's not him. Yeah. yeah. Surely. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the voice he does with <laughs> yeah, it as well. Voice is fine. I oh. reckon if Ashton Kutcher did that though, he would have he would have got cancelled. Like, even if he did it in the same time as Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. But because, you know. RDJ. Yeah, he just did it so top notch. For you, RDJ. For you. <laughs> so, Tom, what would uh, what would be the situation you do blackface in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd do Tropic Thunder too. I reckon. Yeah. If, if, if it was that well done, mm. I think. That's about, yeah, the only time I'd do it for Legacy. You'd black up. To stay true for the original. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't call it doing that. No. I, I'd use a different term for it. What would you use? Uh, RDJing up. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man up. Iron Man. I would Sherlock Holmes up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think you could get away with it if you did Tropic Thunder 2 because you'd just be doing an impression yeah. of the first one. Not yeah. racist. It's an impression. Yeah. That's what people are always saying. Yeah. It's, it's, saying. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a critique. So, mm. Tom, you just got back to Australia from my home. I did. I was in. Uh, well, in August, I was in the UK for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. What's What's it like over there? I, you uh, were there pre pre Lizzie's death. I was. Yeah. 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 In the uh, when when we were in a. I heard you were the last person to see it alive. In a matriarchy. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I I won't confirm or deny that, but uh, yeah, it <laughs> There's was. There's your clip. I, I I may or may not have been at Buckingham Palace with a fairly severe case of. <laughs> Pneumonia. Yeah, but, and uh, a pillow like this. <laughs> Come on, Lizzie, go to sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. I uh, I love. I was in London for a week. I was in Edinburgh for a week. Both mm. cities I love. Yeah, and uh, we were saying off pod like they've got such a good comedy scene over yeah. there. Uh, they just love it so much more than Australians do. Mm. And I think they just kind of get it a lot more than Aussies do. Mm. It's amazing you do gigs now, and the host will ask the crowd like, "Who's been to a comedy show before?" And mm. like half the people clap. Yeah, which means like fifty percent of an audience have never seen live stand-up comedy. Mm. Really? Whereas it feels like in the UK, everyone goes. Yeah, yeah. I think like it's it was. I remember when Liverpool got Hot Water Comedy mm. Club, and that was just like everyone just started going like once a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you get you get so used to what? What did you think of the London crowd? They were great. Like, I just think they're a little bit... Well, first of all, a lot of Sydney crowds I find are date nights. Like, it's a lot mm, of couples. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is always a weird dynamic because I think you end up, especially if it's, like, new kind of dates, like, not, like, yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend yet or husband and wife, but it's, like, you're kind of looking at each other to say, like, did you laugh at that? Did you laugh at that? Yeah. You're kind of on your best behaviour. Yeah. Whereas I found London crowds, it was more like there were people on work drinks, there were groups of lads, groups of girls. Like, mm. it's just a bit more like chill yeah, as a result yeah. of that don't think, you think so, oh sorry to cut you off there no, but don't you think that like taking like a, a you know a girl out that you're potentially looking to have as your girlfriend or boyfriend like you know whatever going to a comedy show is probably the stupidest thing you could do on your first date because like you're going to this thing right it's you know trying to trying to trying to i don't know show off a little bit right mm. and then you're going to be like roasted at the front, in the room, I suppose it can show that you can look at, like, mm. laugh at yourself. But other than that, I mean, she can also then go, "Oh my god, that that Tom, he's a he's a good looking bloke," and yeah. you know, piss I off. said that to my missus. I yeah. said, he's a good looking bloke, and she was like, "Jack, no, you promised this wouldn't happen anymore." You know what I mean? Yeah. I just love him so much. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a bit. It, it's I I don't understand people who do that for first dates. Yeah, I get. The thing I get is it's like an event, right? So you'd have stuff to talk about. Yeah, good yeah. or bad, yeah. like. And you, you can kind of avoid the like getting roasted thing. Everyone avoids sitting at the front. It's so funny. You go to I like, love it. You go to like, I love yeah, it. Yeah, you would. That's I really fucking thing. love it. Do you wait? What's your approach if a comedian like engages you in the front row? Yeah, I'm not just gonna be like, ha ha, speak to me. But I'll, I, I, I'll, yeah, I love it. But are you trying to get laughs? Like, are you trying? No, to, no, no, no. I'm just like, it's just, it's the best place to sit, yeah. and I love it because my missus gets so anxious about it. Mm. Is like, your Mrs. Aussie or No, no, she's a scouser. Yeah, okay. So you also Don't have talk to me. Like, she's like, yeah, Don't right. do talk to me. Because you got that thing of uh like instantly you have you give a comic something to talk about in mm. being mm. 
just not from Australia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You got called a PCP addict, didn't you? At one oh, that was <laughs> Warren Bonner. Yeah. I, yeah, I, uh, I heard that as well. Yeah. 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 Thomas done his research for this. I'm really impressed. I'm, like, I just, I, I hate You look like a man who does like, research. What am I going to do yeah. here? What's, yeah. what, what, what's the thing? So. Well, we just want to find out about you. So, and, you what's know, middle name? I think we've got. Robert. Robert. I think we've got a little, Junior. <laughs> a little bit off, off track, but, uh, like, just take us back to the start. Like, when did you know you were funny? Like, were you funny in high school or were you, how'd you do it? How'd you get the balls to like stand up at one of the like open mic comedy things and just go, okay, I'm doing this. Yeah. I think I, uh, I think I always, like if, if I, if I, I th- probably thought I was funny, but I think I always like put a lot of emphasis on being able to make people laugh. Like that mm. was my thing. I was always a really like socially anxious kid. And I thought, well, if I can make a group of people laugh when I'm hanging out with them, I've kind of like justified being here. You've cracked it. Yeah, yeah. you've you've given weft to yeah, it. It's like, yeah, because you can't like if you can make people laugh, there's no doubt you've provided some value. Yeah. So if yeah. you're at a party and you're making people laugh, it's like, oh well, that was good he was here. Yeah. Um, and then like I always kind of had different touch points of stand up throughout my life. Like I remember my mum used to watch Eddie Izzard quite a lot. Like we had it on video. So yeah. I used yeah. to watch Dress to Kill when I was a kid, yeah. and then. I remember when YouTube kind of came out and there were a few different clips that I watched a lot of certain comics like Mitch Hedberg and Dimitri Martin and Arj Barker. Mm-hmm. And then when I was 18, I lived in Edinburgh for a year. So I was there for the fringe. I saw a few shows. I saw Jim Jeffries, which I thought was the funniest fucking thing I'd ever yeah. seen. And I remember I like illegally downloaded a couple of his specials. And when friends would come to stay with me doing their Euro trip, I'd force them to watch Jim Jeffries and us being all like white private school educated guys just thought it was the funniest fucking <laughs> thing in the world. Mm. Um, and then when I was like, cause I actually, I was sort of in a music scene a little for a little bit when I was at uni, like all my mates. Was it a Buddy Holly tribute band? <laughs> it should have been. <laughs> that would have been more successful. Yeah. I reckon. No, it was just like kind of shitty indie pop stuff. Mm. And, but I had friends who were really into it. we come, what we bonded around and, uh, I, I had a mate who really loved music and was great at it. And I remember watching how much effort he put into it. And I was like, oh, I don't like it as much as he does. Yeah. Yeah. But I was at one of his gigs and I was talking to his bass player who I found out had done open mics for comedy. And I was just asking him a million questions about it. And, uh, you know, where do you do it? How do you write jokes? What do you do when you bomb? What do you do if it goes well? Do people heckle? All that kind of shit. And he was like, clearly you want to do it. Yeah. So just stop being a pussy and do it. Yeah. And it's like, that's, at the end of the day, there's no, if you want to do it, there's no reason not to. What's this guy's name? Dan Kuzmiak. But here's the thing. Dan was then, go away, write your five minute set and let me know when you're ready. We'll go do an open mic together. We'll both yeah. bomb together because you're going to bomb. I'm like, all right, fine. So I went away, thought about it, wrote some jokes, had a list of my jokes I was going to do. Like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Um, when are we doing it? He's like, all right, this Wednesday night, there's this gig called Molotov. Um, I know the guys who run it. We'll both go. We'll put our names in the hat. We'll do it. I get a call from him the day before. Hey man, I haven't had really time to think about my set or my jokes or anything, so I'm not going to do it, but I'll come with you and I'll support you. Okay, cool. Day of. I'm like, hey man, we're doing it. He's like, ah, someone's come up. I'm not going to be able to come along, but uh, best of luck. So he just Oof. fucking totally left me in the lurch, whatever. Mm. He was like, I clapped this guy before and I'm feeling bad about it. No. Yeah, apparently, I've since found out he never had any intention of doing it with me. My mate was like, this was the most, uh, like, this was the most reverse engineered prank of all time because he's like, you went, he went out to embarrass you and ended up helping you find your passion. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I went, uh, another man of mine came along. It went fine. I thought it went great yeah. and just never kind of stopped. You're going to think it, it's went great though, aren't you? Like, 100%, yeah. yeah. If, that, if that's you're changed gonna stay, the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're going to keep doing it, you got to think it went great. Otherwise, mm. you'll just kill yourself. Yeah, how do you handle when you like? Have you had those moments where like you 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 can't justify that you did well, and like how do you come back from that? Like, because I imagine that that if you're doing a like a comedy thing, right, and like because if you play music and you and you fucking and you fucking suck, like like people people will be like, oh, that that was that was all right, but also like you can kind of get away with it to a degree. Mm. But I feel like it's harder for you because you you don't have a wall of sound where you're kind of locking you know people mm. you know stopping people from shouting over the top yeah also it's only i mean i guess if you're a singer songwriter it's different but compared to a band it's only you like if you suck you sucked you can't yeah, blame it on exactly. the drummer being out of time yeah um, <laughs> you always are <laughs> always. 
like, uh, yeah, it's it's it. There's because it's different, right? There are the nights where everyone eats shit, yeah, and someone does okay, and it's like, all right, well, this is a shit crowd. Like you were up mm. against it to start with. It's a shame mm. you couldn't break them, but it's not really your fault. And then there's the other one, which is like everyone does great and you do okay or worse you bomb mm. and that's that's pretty hard that's moments of like do i suck at this mm. like mm. i think there's always a bit of that sort of like um truman show thing of like has everyone just been kind of pretending that i'm good at this this whole time mm. and i'm actually fucking shit yeah. uh but yeah it's like the good thing about comedy and as opposed to being in a band i think for, for most people at least is i try and do comedy at least four times a week so you got to have a short memory because you're going back on stage maybe later that night, maybe the next day, maybe two days later. And you just got to kind of remember, like, over time, you know, if you've done two gigs and you bomb one of them, you've bombed 50% of your gigs. Mm. But if you've done, like, where I'm at, where I've probably done, like, a, you know, several hundred shows by this stage, you're kind of like, well, no one show really means that much. Mm. Um, so you just kind of want to make sure you don't bomb the big opportunities and you try and forget the, when you bomb the little ones. Mm. Mm. What what was the first experience like where you had a heckler like yell out something in the middle of the show? Like what what did you do? I don't really. How how old are you, Tom? I'm thirty. Okay. Uh, People ask this all the time. Like it seems to be something people are really fascinated about with comedy is heckling. It doesn't happen as much as you think, Mm. and when it does, it's not what you think it's going to be. So it's very rarely, "Hey, you suck." Like very few people go to do that. Mm. It's usually someone who's way too drunk and thinks they're helping. And, like, thinks they're contributing to it. I reckon you've done this, for sure. Why the fuck are you pinning this on me? Because you're like, I it's love sitting the at the front. No, I just... I, yeah. I'm an easy point of reference to take the piss out of. So yeah. I'll, I'll just allow you, if you need, you know... So this is the thing. I'm allowing your your you to... Oh, fuck, I'm agreeing. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've no! just admitted it. They th- you, th- you think you're helping. You think yeah. you're like, you're, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the show. I'm part of this. <laughs> I am part of every show. Yeah, that's, I know I you think that. Fucking 100%. <laughs> Whether they like it or not, I'm part of the show. I turned up the cricket the other week. They were like, Jack's here. <laughs> they didn't down, know. Down to third man, Jack. <laughs> All right, warm it up. Uh, yeah, it's like... Um, so usually it's someone, and I mean, the one that I was thinking of that comes to mind is like, remember this guy came in by himself on a Monday night on King Street, Quality. no entry, Quality. where it's like, this is just, uh, you know, asking for someone with schizophrenia to walk off the street and become the show. Mm. And this guy was just like, he was dressed like a, you know, 19th century train conductor and drinking goon out of a plastic bag. <laughs> like, as in he had a goon bag in a black plastic bag. And it's hard because it's like he's try- like you ask a rhetorical question like you guys seen these uh, you got you guys you guys seen this nine eleven thing and he's like I did see that and you're like that's all right this is not the point yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like you <laughs> can't really go too hard at them because then the crowd's like whoa leave him alone he's on you know he's clearly oh, out of math. his mind yeah, yeah. Um, so that it's kind of hard you got to wait until somebody you I, the ideal situation is a heckler becomes such a nuisance the entire crowd hates them and then you yeah. don't even have to be that funny when you put them down because yeah. the crowd is like oh thank god we, mm. we've had this co- i think it was a bit part um it's like people want to see the comedian kill the heckler yeah people want to see that yeah. like so i think people like to see the challenge and then go yeah that comedian's anti-trust because they've just dealt with that heckler yeah. you know what i mean because but I don't know. It's one of those things. Like, it's just, it's especially rarely drunk people. Mm. And, and it's the talking loud. I, I went to watch Alex Milinkovic. Mm. He was on. And there was a guy on a first day. I think I told this on the Billy Darcy pod. And there was a guy just pissed. Yeah. And he was just mouthing off. And I was like, fuck off, man. Mm. Do anything with your life today except this right mm. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's, it's like, you've got to let him. Dig his own grave a little bit. You gotta yeah. let that guy make it clear he's being a nuisance before. Because yeah. if you go too early, a crowd will be like, even if, like, I had um, a gig a couple of weeks ago where these like five women walked in in the middle of the show, talking loudly, trying to get to their seat. Three of them are on their phone during the set, and then I had a go at them, and the crowd was like, "Oh, leave, leave them alone. Bloody they're hell, just trying Tom. to have a nice <laughs> night." And it's like, no, they're fucking ruining this for everybody. Yeah. You got to mm. let them like prove that they're the villains for a little bit before mm. you can really like attack them. Right. Mm. What scares me about it too, in your position, is like, I would, you know, if you're remembering your your like jokes and you kind of and 
I don't know how you do it, whether you're like really on the mark, you write it all out, you remember that and kind of go up with that or you leave it a bit loose for yourself to kind of, you know, have a bit of fun with it. But you'd, I imagine you'd probably be a little bit in your own head kind of going, okay, where am I going to go next and thinking about that. And then if somebody yells out some kind of, you know, dumb shit and you're kind of thrown off by it, like, and also then have to think of something witty on the spot. Yeah, it, but that's like the, the challenge of it, right, is that you should be better at reacting to what's happening in the room. Yeah. It's like, same as music, right? Like, the best music isn't... You, you're not playing your best when you're thinking, like, all right, what's the next chord? Or, mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, here comes the bridge. It's like you when you're in it and you're not yeah. even thinking about what's happening. And if... It's that kind of, you know, it's the jazz thing of, you know, you make a mistake once, it's a mistake. You make it twice, it's jazz. Or you, you just kind of, like, react to whatever you mm. did. If you fucked up, you got to react to it. If someone says something, you got to react to it. Um, I think I went in, like when I started, I was super rote where I was like, all right, these are all the jokes I'm doing. I'm not deviating at all. And what I'm trying to get better at now is reacting to what works, what doesn't work and kind of shifting to, to the audience. The two times I've seen you, you're completely different. Oh, really? Yeah. So when was it? So you saw me Comedy Untamed. I have Comedy Untamed and the other, I think, I think it was at Comedy Untamed again. Okay. But it was like a month after maybe. Mm. But you were different, like even in like your performance, you were different. Okay, like, interesting. I, I don't know if it was just uh, you had less coffee that day, or what, but you you just like you came across different as well. Okay, that's interesting. Better or worse? Yeah, it was one uh, better no, than the other. No, like it was both equally good, but it went like if you go and watch a band and like you know like our level say, and you've got a thirty minute set, it's the same thirty minute set. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You go and see, uh, if you've got your five minutes, you're playing clubs, 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 you're playing your five minutes. If you go and see that, you're going to see the same five minutes. But it didn't feel oh, okay. like I was re-watching something. So were they the same Content's jokes? different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, like it, just your tags and things like that, it just felt different. Okay, you know that's I mean? cool. But that could be the room as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I try to turn material over pretty regularly if mm. I can. I get bored with stuff really quickly. Mm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess I would love to think that like you, you kind of want it to feel alive when yeah. you're in it, I guess. Yeah. And then you get the guys like Alex and like Pat and I think Billy as well. Like they're all very good at, they, they do a lot of stuff in the room. Like mm, they, yeah. they react to a crowd really, really well. I'm probably more of a joke writer as opposed to like a, a, a there's a guy who I heard on a podcast once a comedian who said all comedians are either performers pretending to be writers or writers pretending to be performers. And I think I'm a writer who pretends to be a performer. Mm. Um, and so that's, it's harder for me. Like I, some guys, it's like, I just want to go on stage and just be funny. Mm. Whereas I'm like, here are the jokes that I wrote. Yeah. Do you, do you enjoy like the adulation then you get from a live crowd? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So you're a performer? Yeah, but it's like, before it's not like it's a, not it's my not skill like, set. It's not like it's a fucking chore for you. No, you but I guess I mean? it's like, it's like, you know, uh, I think. Paul McCartney was a better songwriter, but John Lennon was a better performer. Like John Lennon put himself in his music in a way that like, I don't, I think they were both very good at both. Mm. You know what I mean? Like Paul McCartney just wrote amazing songs, yeah. amazing chord progressions and lyrics and all the rest of it. Whereas John was like, this is me expressed through music. Mm. I just think John Lennon was cooler looking overall. I he think. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys Beatles guys. Yeah. Paul's yeah. Must be. Yeah. Paul's and uh, favorite Beatle. Uh, it changes every week. Yeah, really? I'm cha- it's yeah. never Ringo though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ringo. Other than every time I see your face, it reminds. He's had like two or three good ones, honey, Ringo. Is oh, that his solo, his solo career? Yeah, Ringo is my favorite interviewer. Like uh, they ever do, you see interviews with the Beatles. I love it when they do Ringo's because he's always he always seems to be funnier than the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I don't know. It changes all the time. I love George. George I just love Harrison. George's sweetness. Mm. Um. We, we, so like how we got together really on this was Hamish was doing this and then Get Back came out on oh Disney. Yeah. And I was like, you should, you should review it. And I knew he'd ask me because I'm from Liverpool. Mm. I knew he'd ask me. And then that did really well. And then that's when I started doing this with Hamish. Yeah, okay. But like I, I said in it, and my missus like always calls me out on this. I said, Paul just comes across as a bit of a bitch. And Abby's like, you just said Paul McCartney comes across as a bitch. And yeah. I was like, yeah. Then this got like, this got 
over 40,000 views on our YouTube oh, and, cool. and was like featured on the, like if you typed up get back reviews, we were on the same page. But there's probably a chance that somebody in Paul's camp Hopefully, heard that. Oh, I think I think Heather Mills watched it and went, I agree. <laughs> Surely then, if anyone comes across the it, well, I haven't watched the whole thing, but like I would have thought George would come across the, like George is the only one who quit the band. Yeah. I just can't do the Eric can do all that. I can't do all that. <laughs> That's very good. Can you do the four different voices? Can you do the different live Well, Oh, did you put me on the pressure? Can you do? Uh, Paul is like, oh, well, it's really he's like, you know, I'm not trying to be in charge, John, but someone's got to be. Brian's there not here go. anymore. You're two and from four. Keep going. And John's is like very at the back of the throat. It's very, uh, you got to well, you gotta tap into it. You know, we didn't actually say that we were bigger than, than Jesus. Oh, no, I've lost it. Oh, I've lost it. Good. And then Ringo, I just do. Thomas the Tank Engine, really. <laughs> What's that, Percy? Yeah. It's uh, it's quite, so like you saying you met Adam Rao, it's funny how much the Liverpool accent has changed in 50 years. Is that right? Yeah, because, like, I don't know if you can hear it, but like, I don't sound like a Beatle. No. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? And, like, Paddy the Paddy going, what, lad? What? Mm. He doesn't, you know, you can imagine Paul McCartney... Because he's a sweet boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's changed a lot. Actually, funny you say that. This week, somebody was like, oh, you, that guy on your podcast, who is he? And I was like, oh, his name is Jack. And she's, and, and the, there was a girl, and she's like, uh, she sound, he sounds like a beetle. Oh, that's and I was like, which one? And she goes, one of them. All of them. <laughs> All of them. Do you guys yeah. know Kyle Legacy? Yeah. 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 Okay. Only, I've never actually met him, but mm. I've spoken, because when he was in Sydney... Because he went, it went back to the the UK, didn't yeah, he? And then, there now. Um, he was supposed to come on, but it's quite funny. Like I've had it in comedy clubs where you know, when I'm looking for me moments, if you like to say, I'm gonna fucking stop doing that. I'm gonna stop going Tom altogether. And he's like, and people go, oh, you sound like Kyle. Like, and I go, yeah. yeah, I'm sure I do. Yeah, but yeah, like even like Pat Doherty's family, they all say that as well. Oh really? Yeah. Why do you, Why do you know Pat Doherty's family? Uh, oh, we've just he's moved in. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he's something. Yeah. Main, main, main part of going strong. Yeah, right. Yeah, really strong. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Don't you know Pat Doherty's family? No. Are you getting yet. upset not now? Have you got <laughs> well? I've known Pat for many years, but I've never been invited to Sunday lunch. So no. I don't know what I've got to do. One day, mate. One day. One day. We're oh, all in the gutter. There. Can you can you put in some good words? Some for of me? us are looking at the stars. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You'll get there, mate. You'll get there. So Tom, brand new special out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very, 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 very good. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, I spent a very hungover day watching it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was fucking great, man. I appreciate. I I love the idea that someone would watch my special hungover. I had um in the same day. I watched I watched Schultz's new special. I watched Alfie Brown's special. Oh, I love Alfie Brown. So funny. Yeah. And then I watched I watched your one. I, like your one literally just came on and I watched that and it was the best day ever. Yeah, mm. that's a good day. Honestly, it was an amazing day. And I've got to say, I think your one. I appreciate that. Yeah. Take that, Andrew Schultz. Take that, Schultzy loser. Suck on these nuts. Views. Yeah, um, yeah. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Like, cause I mean, Schultz kind of uh, did he? I'm trying to think who started off the YouTube special thing. Um, I guess maybe like Mark Norman was one of the mm. first like really big ones. I tell you, whose YouTube special I f- I found really funny is Brandon Sharp's. The comments on that are the oh, best. Oh fuck, that's so oh. brutal. The the comments on that thing are like funnier than the the the, 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 the special. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Harsh. Oh, Fucking harsh. Poor Andrew Shop. You guys you guys are Reddit guys? You don't use Reddit much? Sometimes. Uh, yeah, I just like to see the fucked up shit people say about things on yeah, there. Okay. Well. So you know what uh the AMAs are, Reddit AMAs, ask me anything. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's a, a very f- like there's a there's a hall of fame of AMAs that go like horribly wrong mm. where people just get totally rinsed by their fans or by yeah. the people on it. And yeah. one of them is the fighter and kid, Brian Callen and oh, uh, yeah. Brent Shop. And they all just attack Brendan so <laughs> heavily. And there's one, the one that stuck with me was they say, Hey Brian, uh, is Brendan f- harder to carry physically or metaphorically? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I find I, when I like listen to their one, I find Brian heart like, pisses me off more like i don't brendan just feels like a like a you know like a big big like you know dumb dude like I d- he i, I know, love he, how you just self-edited <laughs> what you said then because i could see i could see the word coming out of your mouth <laughs> and then you went a big big 
dumb dude. Well, I was trying to think about how to say it. Like he just seems like you know, like just yeah, a bit a little bit a little bit dopey, but like nice overall. I reckon mm. if you met him, you'd be like, oh yeah, he's he's all right. Yeah, he's just a bit soft. Yeah. Have you had any bad comments on your on your special? Oh, you constantly get stuff. I had some one. I got one the other day, like, cause you constantly get this is shit, and it's kind of yeah. like what? whatever. That's cruel. You get a lot of like this is shit. This isn't funny. It's so funny. Like people get so angry when you don't make them laugh. It's yeah. like no one would ever do. Like no one would feel the need to do it if it was just like a music video or if like a short film. But something about like bad com like comedy that people don't funny. They're like this is fucking awful. You suck. Why really? did he do it though? It's so weird. We did a music video and uh, it got a, like a comment on it, like some guy, and I, I ended up finding him on Facebook, and I was just like looking at his profile, and I was like, Jack, loads of people have said it's good, and he liked it. But this one guy fucking gets under his skin. It man. seems to really irritate people when you try mm, yeah. to be funny and they don't think you are. It really annoys them. Mm. I don't know what it is. Can I? S- Say so you did something that I thought was cl- really clever in your in your special, the like the analogy you had between like vaping it, and and Uber. Mm. I thought I thought, wow, that that you loved that one, didn't you? Yeah, he, he said that to me this morning. It never did as well as I kind of hoped. The joke is that vaping will do to cigarettes what Uber did to taxi drivers. A new competitor comes in and takes up an industry because it's <laughs> cheaper, it's more convenient, and it doesn't have the awful smell. Yeah, and it ne- and people would always grow like oh, and I'm like, why do you feel sorry for taxi drivers? Yeah, the yeah, worst. Yeah, hundred percent. I got a taxi uh, maybe six months ago from Bankstown Station to here, right? Because they 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 have it like a taxi rank. It's one of the only places in Sydney. I think they've got a taxi rank still. Old like, school. Yeah, so I get in the taxi, um, and this guy is like smoking a cigarette. Get in the car. It's like good start, right? And um, and he's like complaining to. He was like, "Were you thinking about getting an Uber tonight?" And I was like, ideally, yeah, but you were here. So I thought I'd go with the taxi and he goes there. Yeah, that's what's wrong with the fucking world. And I was like, dude, dude, like I'm giving you like a business. Like why? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, how am I the enemy it's here? so weird to me where it's like these poor cab drivers being taken over by Uber. It's like what? Being taken over by a superior product. Mm. Like, like when the internet came out, we we're like these poor fax machine operators. Yeah. Like who gives a shit? Like, this is how the world works. I've been printing the yellow pages for 35 years. Yeah, exactly. You with your fucking internet. Yeah. You're, what's wrong with the world? Yeah. Like, no. Off, move on. Um, I had this one comment from this. So this is the thing I've noticed. So TikTok, I think because of the, the platform, you get like short to the point, this sucks, not funny. And mm. then you get a lot of like, especially if you do anything kind of edgy, you get mm. like, look at all the fucking snowflakes in the comments, can't handle it. Oh. And it's like, I hate both of you equally. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. In you, YouTube, like, you think you're defending me. Yeah, exactly. But I don't want your defense. I don't want either of you. Yeah. Uh, but I on YouTube, you get some very like thought out, like pros and cons kind of comments. Mm. So I got this guy, he goes, uh, this is on my special. This is brilliant writing, but needs a better delivery. But it'll take a Louis C.K. to deliver this shit with audience approval. He could be the future of comedy, or he could tragically fade into nothingness. I am hoping for the former. It's like, that's a lot of fucking pressure. <laughs> Watch David it on YouTube! <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, God da- and then the next one was not funny. So, you uh, know. At least that guy was to the point. Oh, mm. You know what I like the idea of? Your next show, opening up. You know, when you do your next special with like a voiceover and it's all the negative comments that could be fun. in the show. I was thinking about doing, uh, you know, because do life it. is content now, but yeah. do like a YouTube series, like yeah. responding to, or just I like reacting you to, to those yeah, mean, yeah. Like mean tweets. You know, Jimmy Kimmel did that. Yeah. Thing yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got my only review I have in any publication was I did a Raw. You guys know what Raw comedy is? Mm. I did that a couple of years ago and uh, The Age reviewed it and they basically gave everybody a sentence. Like, you know, the the winner got a paragraph, the runner-up got a paragraph and everyone else just got a sentence. Like, this person did fine, this person did well, whatever. And mine said, um, Tom Whitcomb started strongly with jokes about his roommates having sex before losing the crowd with a needless jab at women's athletics. (laughs) And so that was my poster quote for a while was... (laughs) That's Tom really good. Strongly before losing the crowd with a needless jab at women's athletics. That's really good. And I've had a few people be like, I saw that comment. I was like, that seems like a show like I'd want to see. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Me too. 100%. The sex. Sexism. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. No, that's like, I, I, I think use that. Like it's fucking. Yeah. 
the, it's I just love how people get so like considered and stuff with their comments. Like you know what I mean? They're like oh, I'm gonna have to get my opinion out on this. Yeah, yeah. The Fuck time. Off, man. I find it personally really hard to reply to text messages. Like I just ring everybody mm. and, and then I see these people on YouTube, like whatever video I'm watching, like just fucking type up like paragraphs and paragraphs and all and I'm like even on even the people on Facebook, it's just weird to me. It's like, how do you have that much time? Like, just mm. to be like, and, 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 like, and who do you think fucking cares? <laughs> he shares the podcast on, like, like, Adelaide music scene and stuff like that, right? And he shared it and it was, like, on, a, like, a fucking, like. Oh, it was on the coast. It was, like. Yeah, a, it was, like, fucking Kayama rock and metal scene, right, like, on Facebook. And he shared it. Someone commented, what's this got to do with the Kayama rock and metal scene? <laughs> Like, fuck <laughs> off, man. Yeah, like... <laughs> We're going to miss out on some important Kayama rock and metal yeah. scene news. You know how many gigs there are at Kayama rock and metal? In, in, oh, like, there's like one every six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to miss out on that. <laughs> Shoot yourself. Fuck it, it is. It is bizarre, this idea that, like, the world needs to know how I feel about this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then he tagged... And then he also went back and he tagged, like, the, the, the admin of the group. And he's like, this this has to be like a like a like a dress. Like yeah. what what are we doing? This is not to the guidelines. Mm. Oh man, just relax. Yeah. Just have a beer. Just Being chill a out, bitch. dude. Yeah. Being a bitch. That's a problem. Are you on Twitter? No. I love Twitter. Yeah. Right. What for? Uh quietly just watching the world. Yeah, okay. Burn Burn. down. It is it is a bit like that, isn't just it? Just retweeting stuff. Mm. Corgis running. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Do you do you tweet? Um, what was your last tweet? I remember I had a big because last year I had to do quarantine in Queensland. Remember okay. those days? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I had to yeah. do two weeks quarantine, and um, the Liverpool FC had put like the rainbow flag on the badge, and it was like for Pride Month or whatever. And uh, all the like the Mo Salah fans, I'm gonna call them, um, were like. Ugh! Ugh, this is disgusting. A man and a man should never be together. It is not right. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You know what I mean? And then I just went after every single one of them, right? To the point where Twitter was like, would you like to turn off your notifications? <laughs> so my phone was fucking blowing up. Poor choice of words. It was blowing up, right? But these people were not happy. Mm. And then my missus was like, why don't you just not <laughs> argue with people? So, yeah, I try not to. I used to do a thing during lockdown. I was posting videos on TikTok, like me making jokes about the news. Yeah. And there was this one story about Lewis Hamilton at the Qatar Grand Prix wearing a rainbow flag yeah. helmet. Yeah. And I wrote a joke. It was something like, uh, you know, the helmet both demonstrated his support for the LGBT community and also protected him in the case of a public stoning. Yeah. And uh, all of the comments were like, respect for Hamilton, through the floor like this guy is such a fucking pose like people were so angry about it mm. and then I started to realize I was getting a lot of the same like like the same words from different accounts I think there's a lot of bots mm. I, I actually there's, agree that's I what Elon those... said recently like in that in that Twitter inquiry he's like you guys can't even tell me how many bots there are there is no monitor like there is no way that you guys are monitoring this yeah Mm. I've heard apparently I can't remember someone was talking about this recently but like of all the internet profiles of all the internet activity like 25% of it is human and the rest of it is bots that's yeah, fucked I up believe that, isn't it? that yeah. is fucked up that. so I wouldn't be surprised and stuff because it's that all the hate of, all the hate messages on your YouTube bots mate as, uh, yeah, you don't all, probably pay for that Pat Doherty and all the positive Snake. ones definitely real people yeah. real important influential real people flesh and blood that's it yeah 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 um, so I reckon whenever there's an opportunity for something like, you know, if someone posts a pride flag, there's some algorithm out there which is like, fuck this, man and a woman, the Bible says, mm. I reckon it's all horseshit. I hope so. I like to think so. Mm. Well, you don't know, do you? People are just cunts. Yeah, people Unfortunately. Are. People can be cunts. It is, un you do meet certain people like, fuck, I didn't know these people still existed. Mm. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. Like, did you see that, uh, the Sydney United game the other day? Did you see this? The... It's the level below A League. It was yeah. the final, and it was Sydney United versus Macarthur, I think. Mm. And there were like people doing the Nazi salute in the crowd, and there were people like booing over the welcome to country and all this stuff. I was like, ah, oh, you forget these people are out there, yeah, don't you? yeah, the knobheads. Yeah, someone took a so Richarlison who plays for Tottenham. He's Brazilian. Mm. 
and they were playing someone and he someone threw a banana at him, which is like what used to happen in like the eighties. Yeah. But I think today, with so many cameras about and whatever, mm. like you're not getting away with that. No. Nah. And you took a banana from home. <laughs> you fucking keys, wallet, mm. vape, <laughs> banana. Yeah. You know what I mean? What and a waste of a banana. That's a fucking. Like there's exactly. people in the world that are starving. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, he might have been having it so it looks like he had a penis. You yeah, know what I mean? Like a yeah. decent sized one. Yeah. I've heard people do that. I've never done it. <laughs> Socks. But uh, yeah, it's just, some people are just, it's fucked, man. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Mm. But you know, hopefully they buy tickets. Yeah, that's it. As long as they buy tickets, <laughs> I don't mind. Leave your politics at the door. <laughs> yeah. It's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, just don't racially abuse anyone while you're there. Yeah, yeah. Check your clan cloak at the door yeah. and it won't be a problem. Yeah, don't start yeah. saying, Hail Tom Wickham. Your money's as good as anybody's. <laughs> yeah, and I've noticed, I, have you noticed like when, like in the last, maybe, maybe like 10 years, like politics is now like, like team sports. Like not like, it's not like just like, okay, I feel this way about this. I feel this way about that. I feel this way about this. But I also maybe feel, you know, indifferent about this. Now it's this like one way or the other way. Yeah. It's, I, I'm getting upset to be honest thinking about it, mate. Yeah. It fucking grinds me down, hey? It's just like, oh my God. Oh, I suppose I suppose we do that about everything, don't we? Like, you know, it, it was, the football was on the other day, the grand final. Yeah. And then people in Parramatta were like, I don't like, like for those people in Penrith. And it was like, it's the whole thing. We just find ways to divide ourselves <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. That's what Tom does with his jokes. He, he brings people down. I love that oh, Tom. That no, I'm only joking. I'm only yeah. joking. Yeah. You do in the comments anyway. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to start replying to each of them? If you would, I'd I love fucking, that. I, I need a hobby. Yeah, it's good for the algorithm too. Yeah, feed I'll, the algorithm. I'll do, I'll do feed the algorithm. Mm. You've done exceptionally well views-wise, man. It's uh, it's 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 packed on. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. It's like a, it's a treadmill, right? Yeah. It's like you, I don't remember what I initially was like. I'd like to hit this many. I don't know if I really said a number. Mm. I just didn't know what to expect. And every time you hit a milestone, you're like... This is pretty good, but you know what would be even better is more. Yeah, yeah right. That's yeah. the weirdest thing. You get like, so greedy with it. Yeah, yeah. is that I've, I think about this sometimes. There's that uh, Simpsons quote where they're talking about uh, how much how much money Mr. Burns has made, and he goes, mm. "Yes, but I'd give it all up for a little more." Mm. I think that's so. It's oh, so, so true. true. Um, I, so yeah, every time I'm like, yeah, twenty grand, twenty thousand. That's pretty good, but twenty five would be pretty. Good. And then you hit twenty five. Mm. What if I hit? Yeah. yeah. Um. And you know, to be honest, I looked at the demographics the other day of it, and seventy five percent of them are, are in America. So it does fucking nothing for me. It's all like vanity. You say that. And you say that. that. But they've got more. One. Yeah. One. You'll be one in Austin with... next year. You'll be there with Rogan and oh, all the other boys. Cool. Yeah. Doing, uh, doing Rogan's club. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. I, do, I get around that. Just think, right? A year from today, you could be on. On his podcast. Imagine that would. Be, what would I? I yeah. I don't know. And I'd you'd a, say we owe it all. To West Coast, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard about these guys talking shit about Paul McCartney. Yeah. And I thought I got to delve into this. Yeah, I've got to get into that. Yeah, hundred percent. Sorry, Paul. I, uh, I think the the best chance I have of getting on the Joe Rogan podcast is getting like a PhD in astrophysics. I think that's probably the fastest route to get yeah. on there. Just start fucking working with AI, and he'll be like, "So, uh, yeah, a robots true. like real?" I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, have you ever took DMT? Now, Joe, you guys done DMT? I've done it. <laughs> Look at me. I've fucking done it. Yeah, what haven't you done? Have you done everything? I haven't done heroin. Okay. I haven't done ice. Okay. Um, I haven't done it for a while. Your Honor, I haven't done a thing for a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not DMT. Have you done DMT? You no. just winked at me, everyone. <laughs> He's a dirty drug taker. Have you done DMT? I have, yeah. What do you think? Tom, you don't look like the kind of guy who's done DMT. Yeah, I know. I went through a bit of a like, because I, I, this is typical, like, 20 years old, got heaps into Joe Rogan. And I'm like, I'm going to be a psychedelic guy. You know what I mean? I didn't do, mm. I've done many party drugs in my time, but I was like, for a while, I was going to be like a psychedelic, psychedelic dude. Uh, Get a lava lump. Yeah, exactly. And a beanbag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's the Mitch Hedberg. He, I think, did he? He dabbled with psychedelics before he went to hard stuff, right? I don't know. I reckon he just did everything because he overdosed on heroin when he. That's how he died. Died, yeah. Um, I reckon he was just a party. Like apparently, he could just drink with the best of them. Mitch Hedberg, like he was just a party guy. I like the people who can drink with the worst of them. That's, <laughs> yeah. who, that's who I want to hang around with. <laughs> uh, yeah, I only did it once, and that's all you need. Yeah, it was pretty. Like, I always thought it was interesting. Like, I remember when I was. 
like 18 before I'd done any drugs, like hearing about people talk about getting stoned and just, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, mm. what do you mean? It's like, everything's just really funny. But why? What is that? And I think. How old was you when you first got stoned? 18. In Amsterdam. Wow, that's late, man. Yeah, I didn't touch, like I didn't really drink before school finished. Um, I didn't really touch anything until I was 18. You do kind of look like a straight laced kind of dude. Yeah, like I'm like, fairly yeah. like, you know, from a good home. Yeah, kind of he was raised well. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> mind his p's and q's. Yeah, yeah he's got manners. What does, that, what does that term mean? Mind your p's and q's. Uh, Hugh, because you, I'm not asking <laughs> you to think about it. You fucking moron! I'm asking you to Google it. <laughs> Why would that go for you for that? I also love there was so much confidence there. Of like, I don't know, but I reckon I can work it out. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I know it. that. What would that mean? Because <laughs> you have your peas with corn, right? Oh. Oh. Oh, real. Will that will that come up on the please board? and thank yous? Please podcast? and thank yous. Please. Thank you, Hugh. Please and thank. We have got him a microphone over there. Yeah. He just doesn't use it. Yeah. He just walks around thinking about Billy Darcy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who, um, who are your favourite comics in the scene at the minute? Especially oh, can we, when we just get back to oh, the... Oh, sorry, we were on DMT, DMT weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I just did it once and I can't... I sorry, think I, I technically sorry about that. broke through, but oh. I got a lot of visuals and I was like, wow. It's just like when you see things that... It's kind of got that widescreen thing. Like yeah. it doesn't look the way the world looks. Yeah. And all the geometric patterns and kind of like... I think I sort of met something, but not really the way that That's other Jesus. people... Uh, no, I met... I did meet God during a mushroom trip though. I'm pretty sure. And he told me I was him. So there you go. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the way that we all are. So did you build yourself up before that experience? Like were you like, okay, well I've got to, you know, if 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 the DMT is the you know the strongest one, I was I should you know have a progression up, right? Or D should I? DMT was also one of the I never really did because it was like I was never around. I wouldn't know where to find it, and then I you know found it once. But I was kind of like. During university, I did mushrooms with some friends. I did LSD with friends, but always like pretty low doses. Mm. I was never one of those like, I was never one of those push it to the edge of the cliff kind of guys. Like I was like, this will be a pleasant time. Mm. I don't think I've got it in me to take any of that stuff anymore. Really? Yeah. You used to? Yeah, well, I did. The last time I did that, <laughs> the last time before I did acid before that time, it was, uh, when did it, this would have been five years ago and we'd been out all night and it was like 7 a.m. And we went back to someone's place and he was like, oh, I've got some acid if you want to do that. And I was like, yeah, of course, great idea. Mm. It's the worst trip ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mrs. picked me up and I was just like tripping balls. And she was like, if, if her family's watching, I apologize, by the way, I'm trying to change. <laughs> um, but she was like, what if you're going to be stuck like this now? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't need to hear that. You know what I mean? That was not what I needed to hear. Do you remember, do you, remember, you see the movie Ted? You know, yeah, yeah, called, yeah. There's just that one little bit where he's talking about the strains of weed he has. He's like, I, got, I can't remember the first I got this. I got gorilla stomp and I got something called this is permanent. <laughs> 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 and you do, it's like you go into those things, you're like, just remember, even if it goes bad, it's going to be over eventually. And you're yeah. going to be like, this is going to last forever. Yeah. This is me now. Yeah. I feel like the bad, the bad ones, like, are the best ones, really. Because then you come out the other side being more grateful that you're alive. <laughs> Everyone you says that, but I reckon that's I think no, bullshit. No. I want to be tasting rainbows and <laughs> fucking sucking on God's teeth. I don't want to be down in the dumps. Really? Like, uh, cause Thinking I, about my ancestors. Because I've always felt like those ones were the ones where I thought about the most most shit and also I've had to figure out a solution to whatever problem I was kind of facing. And then the next mm. day I'm like, oh, I feel like a weight is lifted. I don't know. I think I think the people who are like into it are really into it. Mm. You know what I mean? But yeah. I just, I can't do that to my mind. That off, I couldn't do it again. I don't think I could do it again. Yeah, I the times that were because I I'm like I'm an overthinker and an anxious person generally, mm. and the times that it went bad, I'm like this is horrible. I hate yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so and that's why I always kind of did pretty like low dose. The only time I ever did a high dose of mushrooms, I did by myself and felt like I went totally insane, and it was interesting, and it had really nice moments. But there's some where I was like, oh, I'm just so fucking out of it. <laughs> It just can't, you know when you just can't grasp onto anything? Yeah. I felt so useless. Yeah. I was like, if I was forced, same as like, I smoked a bit of weed in uni, but I would always do it 
at the end of the day when I had nothing left to do. Yeah. Because I just can't navigate the world anything yeah. but sober. Yeah. I well, I mean, drunk, but you know what I mean. I, I don't like like weed at all. It no? just it doesn't sit well with me. Man, at that all. is not the vibe you give off. Yeah, well, the, the others do. He looks like Shaggy from doesn't. Scooby-Doo, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's doesn't. smoking that weed with his talking dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The dog still talks. The dog still talks. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Weed's like... I just find it, it does make you a bit useless. Mm. Like, absolutely fucking... Who was it said that to me? The quickest way to kill a relationship is if one person smokes a lot of weed. Oh, okay. Um, Because it's just like... You don't want to do anything. Yeah. You just want to eat, be yeah. stoned, and watch fucking it just Batman me, cartoons. It just makes me so paranoid. Allegedly. And my brain has to like narrate itself suddenly. Mm. It's like all of a sudden I feel like David Attenborough is in my head and it's like one foot in front of the other will make us walk in a straight line. And it's like, well, how do I breathe? Fuck, I forgot how to breathe. And it's You're in a monologue when you're stoned, David yeah. Attenborough. <laughs> That's sick. That's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, but not when you forget how to breathe. Yeah, I I find that I'm like in the middle of conversation. Be like, even when I'm talking, like, what the fuck am I talking about? Mm. Yeah. You're in the middle of something. You're like, what was I? What are we? Where? Where? What's happening? Mm. Yeah, and then um, you're like, do these people think that this is a good conversation? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You get you get very matter of like these people. Are, I'm 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 sucking in this conversation. Mm. Right yeah, now. I'm bombing right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were saying about your anxiety before. Mm. Did that. Is that like a factor when you when you've got a show, or do you not think about it? I get nervous before a show, but I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I don't really count that as anxiety as much. I mean, it's the mm. nerves. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I find um, performing. Like, if I'm anxious, like if I'm life anxious, performing is a really good way to snap me out of that. I think there's something like it's like an adrenaline dump or yeah. something that I find like if I'm having. So there's some days where I'm like, the last thing I want to do is do stand up tonight, and then I do it, and afterwards I feel so much better. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's it's like, like I've had a bit of shit going on recently, and we had a gig, and I didn't want to do the gig, mm. but I needed to do that gig. Yeah, I felt like even for like 45 minutes, I felt like me, but like you know, without any, because that's what you do, and you. You're going up and it's you, but without all your bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, without getting super wanky about it, you were saying at the very, very start, like, how do you feel about artistry or whatever? But it is kind of like a form of meditation, right? Yeah, absolutely. That you are so in whatever it is you're doing. The yeah. same with, like, going for a run or going to the gym yeah. or, like, if you yeah. really get absorbed in music or even, like, watching a movie is kind of like you just drop everything before yeah. and after and you're just yeah. in this thing. Yeah. It just makes you present. Yeah, massively. And I think that's, like, the 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 curse of it in a way because then and that's a that's the one thing that I that I that I do miss by not playing music at the moment is mm. like that feeling of like all this and like all the all the pressure of this this thing that you've kind of built up towards in your mind and going okay I'm doing this whatever else and you practice and then it's the day and you see the you see the stage and you get up on there and you realize fuck this is this is the moment mm. and you're you're super super you know, highly dialed into whatever you're doing and you get off and you can't sleep and you got that adrenaline going in your body. Mm. And it's like, yeah, it's it's its own it's its own drug really, isn't it? Do you do you get like post gig blues? Mm. I suppose you do and that that often you can't. If it goes badly? Or if it just generally no, no, just like, like the missing it. The next day. Oh, okay. No, because it, yeah, it happens so fast. I suppose so you're doing it that often, it's like Also, it I think it's in. a different experience because I'm usually only on stage for for the most part. 10 minutes, mm. maybe 15, yeah. usually seven. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I've done like big, like my own hour long show, like the one I recorded for yeah, the special, yeah. that's a little bit, because the next day you're like, oh fuck, well that's over now. Yeah. Um, like really big stuff does sort of, but yeah, for the most part, because you're getting, you, you do get a rush of adrenaline, even if it is to seven people at a pub. Mm. Um, so I think it does, you just kind of keep the ball in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Because I suppose like, you know when you so is, was that at Melbourne Comedy Festival? Is that what it was filmed? Was it Sydney Raw Comedy or my one? Your one, Sydney. Sydney Comedy Festival. Where, where, where what rooms that in? In in the Factory Theatre. Oh, is the it? Factory yeah. Floor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. How many shows did you do? I did two. You did two. Would you like? Does the idea of say you know we were talking about Edinburgh before? Does the idea of like doing like fucking a month long show is that something that you think you'd be into or just... I'd love to do it next year. Yeah. Uh, I think it might destroy me. 
Like, mm. I think the anxiety... Because the thing I hate is selling tickets. Because that is so stressful and yeah. it feels... It's a reminder of how far away you are from where you want to be. Because mm. you can go on, like, you can go on stage and crush and be like, oh, I'm fucking... I'm made for this. You know what I mean? And then you have to sell tickets for showing you're like, oh, yeah, no one gives a shit. You know what I mean? Like, when yeah, it comes... That to is, that's a hard fucking... I, I know what you're talking about there. That is hard. Yeah. And it's, you know, especially... I mean, it's even harder, I think, in music because the the little time I spent in bands you have to like you're always selling your own tickets you're yeah. always trying to drive people there whereas yeah. comedy the vast majority of do, gigs I do there is either a pre-built audience or someone hasn't done their job mm. whereas every time I do my own show like I did a little tour just Wollongong Brisbane Newcastle going to cities I don't live in where I don't have friends or family you're like hey strangers can you please come pay money to come watch me do this thing it's mm. very hard um, and I think that would stress me out, especially first time doing a festival. Same as doing, I haven't done Melbourne Comedy Festival before, but the idea of having to spend 20 consecutive nights and every night be like, have I sold any tickets? Is anyone mm. coming? Going out and performing in front of four people and just being confronted by the fact that you do not have a following is quite, I, I think that would be hard. Mm. Have, you but, got, have you got an agent? No. So is that like in your mind the next thing? I'm sure you'll get one after that special. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It, like, there's just not much of a, like, there's there's four management, uh, there's more, but there's only a handful of management companies in Sydney. And I would say all of them vaguely know who I am and have never shown any interest in me. Yet. Yet, sure. But it's you, like. You've, now you've got this special out. Yeah, but it's like, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll be interested to see if it means anything. I The thing is, I would love to have management, but I think to me that, what I would love about it is the reassurance that someone who does this for a living sees something in me. Yeah. Um, as opposed to what I think objectively an agent would do for yeah. me. Yeah. And I remember hearing somebody, I can't remember whether it was in response to comedy or something else, but this made a really good point, which is like, you don't want to have to beg someone to take you on as management because mm. they, then they don't believe in you. You yeah. want them to come to you and be like, this is what I'm going to do for you. Yeah. So I don't know. Sometimes I like I go hat in hand to these places. I send an email like, "Hey, I'd love management. Can we? Can I go for a coffee or something?" But if you're trying to convince these people, that's a bad place to start. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's, yeah better, no, it's better to be chased, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. for sure. So I think I would. Um, I'd love to go to Edinburgh. Edinburgh also kind of has that appeal of like, fuck, who knows? Maybe because Edinburgh has that thing as opposed to I don't think you really have that at any of the comedy festivals here. Where if you go with a great show yeah. and you're an interesting act. People will come. People will find out about you. Sam Con is it? Con What's his name? Sam, Sam Campbell. Sam Campbell. Just one best show. Yeah, just one best show. Yeah, I, I think it'd be better for He's you. He's hilarious, man. He's so Fucking funny. Hilarious. Better for you too if you could like just continue to work the way you are until you can work to a point where you could essentially pay people to be your management mm. and and you know collect um, you know the money for it, but also have people that you trust really in charge of yourself. Yeah, which would be ideal right because you mm. you know if you've if you've got a mate that's really good at doing doing uh, a certain thing and having them kind of come on board and be part of it and travel with you and you know look after you and you know it's wouldn't it be fun yeah i guess it depends on what you want them to do for you as well right like i mean i still love the idea of going through those traditional channels i'd love to be on the gala i would love yeah. to be a guest on abc panel show sort of stuff like i would love to do all those things um, but that is stuff where it's like you need to know the guy who knows the guy. Mm. You, know? you look like you would be great on the ABC panel shows. I would like to think, but also I, I don't know, like because my style of comedy is pretty divisive and pretty like, for lack of a better term, edgy. And I don't know if that's what the ABC is looking for. Well, the ABC needs something because the ratings are not very good. Yeah, but I don't think, do they care? Like they're not really, like well, they're, they're not selling ads. Mm. Yeah, well then, well, they're government funded they'll get that money regardless yeah, every, like, every true year right that that, th that's a really good point but surely that you know you want to have somebody watch your show you definitely do but I think it's like I think the ABC has a, a, a bigger imperative of like making content that they think is like for the national interest you mm. know what I mean like and I think that's where the ABC has been very good it's a it's a weird thing to talk about as a straight white guy to complain about being treated differently for being a straight white guy but that's definitely a thing yeah. especially in comedy where you are the thing in yourself right yeah and there's been a lot of push in a lot of commercial places to get more diversity in yeah racially sexually we had this wise. conversation about an hour before you got here man. Oh, really? we literally had this conversation didn't yeah we? and it's hard because it's like i don't want to be the guy but like, this is 
bullshit. I get treated differently. It's like the irony of like a straight white guy being like, oh, I get treated differently because of the way that I look. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, no, I, I get it though. But like, so, and then they're like their like counter argument is, yeah, but you've had these opportunities for years. He's like, I haven't been on the ABC for years though, yeah. have I? And someone else who, who is white, yeah. maybe male, has been on it, but I haven't been on it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know what you're saying. And it's the same dudes that are getting like who are hosting all of these shows. Like they're all just older straight white dudes who were, you know, this wasn't a problem when they were starting. Mm. But you know, you do, you need. I totally get the idea that you need to be creating space for the voices that there wasn't space for yeah, before. So. And it's like there is just a thing of like, hey, there's only so much room for straight white guys now, and we got the guys, so. Stick around if you want. You have to go to the UK. I really want to. You have to. Stick I around. think. I honestly think you'd be on a panel show in no time anyway. Mm. Yeah. Because I, because like, you're going over there and you're an Aussie. Mm, that's S- true. So, oh, we can get this Australian comedian on. He, he, he's yeah, he's on the he's on the circuit over there. Yeah, we'll get him on. It is. You've yeah. got more of a chance of it, doing it because you are different over yeah. there. You know just I mean? like Jim. Pardon? Just like Jim Jeffries, you mentioned yeah. before, you know. Your mate James. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. well, mate, you know, Jimmy Boyd. <laughs> I call him James. <laughs> I call him Christian name. That's what I call him, James. But yeah, I think I think you would. You do well. Out of the comedians we've had on here, I think you do the best in the UK. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I think Take you that. should do it. Why, what, what, what makes you say that? Um, I think your humour, what, what, like... The way you deliver it, I think British crowds will take that better, right? Yeah. And British crowds know you're taking the piss, yeah. right? It's not a, well, for the most part anyway, but it's not like a, what did he just say there? Yeah, it's, it's very it, true. You won't get that because, I'm sorry, Australia, but we take the piss more. Yeah. We definitely take the piss more. Yeah, and I think there's also just a thing, as we were saying at the start, the Brits just... Stand-up comedy is more part of their culture. So they're used to it. I think there is a large majority, like the amount of people, like friends of mine who've come to see me perform. Yeah. And I have jokes where it's like, I have a brother in this joke. They're like, you don't have a brother. Mm. And then they'll come up to me. Like, I didn't realize comics just make shit up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they do. Yeah. And it's really frustrating because it's like, my girlfriend hates coming to my gigs with friends because I'll make jokes and it's gotten better over time Like, because I've, I've had to adjust. But at the start, Jimmy Carr talks about how like he has sets where in that set he has both a girlfriend and a wife because in one joke it needs to be a girlfriend and in one yeah. joke it needs to be a wife. Yeah. And there's just this kind of understanding of like, oh, he's just making people up for the point of the joke. Mm. Um, where, and so when people come and hear me talk about my girlfriend and like something that happened or something she said, they're like, oh, did you actually do that? I'm like, what? No, this yeah. is a fucking yeah. joke. Um, <laughs> anyway. The Brits, I think, have a firmer grasp. Like, These are jokes. This is a, this is a yeah. false world that he's creating, and that's all fine, and all, all the rest of it. Mm. Um, whereas I think a lot of Aussies are like, "This is a guy." Stand-up comedy is a man talking, or or a woman is a person. Oh <laughs> Jesus! Stand-up comedy is a person talking about their life and what they truly think, and mm. that's what it is. Mm. And it's just, I just don't think that's just certainly not what I do. It's like music, man. Right? Fucking, I, I wrote this song not long ago, and my uh, my bass player was like, "Who's that about?" Mm. I was like, they're just fucking words. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm glad you think it's about, but they're just words. Mm. Yeah. I'm too lazy to rewrite, put the fucking words and the stain in there. And he's like, oh, it's really good. And I was like, they're just, it's it's filling a space. That's what you do. When you, like, that, that's the annoying thing. I think like when you're, when you're going to stand up, you've got to appreciate that. It's like, you know, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. It's like, you, yeah. there's yeah. bullshit in there. You can't take it verbatim as, like, Especially gospel. Especially, like, my opening joke that I like a lot because I think it establishes what I do is um, uh, COVID ruined my sister's wedding plans. It, uh, it killed her fiancé. <laughs> and the amount of times that it gets grown, people are like, oh, I'm like, you fucking moron. Yeah, it's oh. a joke. But it is, it's just like, I think it is just programmed in Aussies, like, and it is it it a lot of the time a lot of other Aussie comics are being very honest on stage mm. and they're like I guess that's what it all is. Mm. Yeah, well I suppose like you know the Carl Barron thing of like seeing that as you know on your TV kind of growing up like for me anyway because mm. I, I lived in I lived in Dubbo in the middle of Shout out Dubbo. So everyone knew like like Carl Barron's jokes, but they're all like kind of 
you know, he's not making anything up. He's like, oh, yeah, Queensland's fucking hot. That's why everybody talks slow. Mm. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I, 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 I just think it'll be better off over there. Yeah. I would love to. And I, I really like the UK anyway. I would, I would love to live there. Even if I can never stand on a comedy stage again, I would love to live in the UK. Yeah. I really like it over there. Honestly, go and live in Manchester, right? Yeah. Being fucking Edinburgh in two hours, I think it's two hours and three hours, mm. avoid London. But, like, Liverpool's got a great comedy scene. Manchester's got a great comedy scene. I've heard Manchester's got a really good comedy yeah, scene. Just bounce, yeah. bounce between. Mm. Like, fucking... I, I, I just think you're going to be so much better off there. Especially you. Like, you know what I mean? They, they'll take you. Like, I love Billy Darcy. Yeah. I can't see Billy Darcy... Well, yeah, I mean... Like, kick, you know, like look, look smashing so it. Aussie. Just look next to you. Look, yeah, Liam Gallagher. even got the same glasses. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I think you should do it. Man. And uh, I suppose the Gallagher is a great example. Like, look at no one. No one is trying to break down the Gallagher like Oasis songs and thinking that there's something more deeper here. Mm. Like they are the definition of people that are just using words to fill spaces. Feeling supersonic, give me gin and tonic. You can have it all, but how much do you want? It's just like he's yeah, <laughs> filling space. I can't it's great. No one ever said to Liam Gallagher. I guess it was no. I was like, hey, no. Do you reckon we could find a word that isn't sunshine for this one? It's like nah, sunshine. <laughs> yeah. There's a really great article which is the 25 best musician on musician insults. Have mm. you seen this? No, no. So good. Noel Gallagher's in a few of them, but his my it's my favorite because a lot of them are just harsh. But uh, my, I think it's just beautiful. Noel about Liam is uh, he's like a man with a fork in a world full of soup. It's just uh. poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the story about uh, when Liam went round to Noel's house and he had a fork in a bottle of champagne? And he's, he's like, like why, why'd you do that? And he's like, oh, it keeps it fresh. And he goes, oh, all right. And then Noel said he went round to Liam's house and Liam had a fork and a pint of milk. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking, it's incredible that. That's so good. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking. My out. favorite one is the is when um, Sasha Baron Cohen talks about how he how he met Liam Gallagher. Oh yeah. What was the film he like? Oh, uh, Grimsby. Grimsby. Terrible film. Sorry, yeah. Sash. But yeah, it, he like plays. It's like Liam Gallagher in the film. He's mm. got the haircut and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Who's the greatest living rock star? Yeah. And he's like, he's got Bono and, you know, um, next to him. And he's like, Stevie Wonder. And he's like, fucking Stevie Wonder. Who's the greatest living rock star? Liam Gallagher, Bono next to it, you know, in front of Sasha Baron Cohen. And he's, and he's like, um, and, and before he can answer, Liam Gallagher's like, John Lennon. I am John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> he threatened to stab him, didn't he? He's like, I'll stab Maybe you in the eye. Maybe don't go and see Liam Gallagher. <laughs> he might stab you. You don't want that. You don't want oh. that. So, Tom, what's uh, what's the next year looking like for you, my friend? Uh, I want to do what I did last year again. Uh, I want to on my next hour, and I want to put it out on YouTube again. I want to do that. I'm thinking I want to do that three times Yeah. in three years uh, because I think I'm at this stage where it's like it probably doesn't – I think to write material, scrap it, and go again is probably the best way to get mm -hmm. quick. So I'd love to put out another hour next year that's hopefully better than this one. And then again, the year after, I would like to move to the UK yes. uh, end of next year or start of the following. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I hopefully do the festivals next year. I'm trying to toss up whether to do which of the festivals to do. Because I just hear, like for the first year especially, because you just haven't toured much, they're just fucking bleak. Mm. Like going to Adelaide and going to Melbourne, I just hear selling tickets can be rough. Mm. But if nothing else, I would like to... Pull an hour together, do it in Sydney, take it to Edinburgh, do it over there, hopefully have it be good enough that some people pay attention. Can I ask, is your the material in your special? Is that banned now? Is that gone? Uh if I have paid gigs, usually so I would like to burn it on every unpaid gig to force myself to write new stuff. Yeah. Um if I if I'm getting paid for a gig, I think I have an obligation to to do okay. Mm. So I'm like, well, I know this stuff works. Yeah. So at least at the very start, I'll open, I'll close with that. Yeah. Or even older stuff. Yeah. Um, if I was ever to do a show selling tickets, like people are coming to see me, I wouldn't do that stuff anymore. Mm. Can I ask a question? Why are you releasing like hour, like an hour special, right? Because like I was, you know, um, I'm just out of curiosity. How come you don't like release it as, you know, like a like a 20 minute segment and then you could have like you know you could have a couple of them mm. you know part one part two part part three or just just call them something different but it's the same special but you at least get to put out 
you're putting out more content, I suppose. Yeah, so Schultz did that when he, the one before Infamous, he had that one, Tales from the Sis, we just set, put out as like five, ten minute bits. Yeah. Um, I think there seems to be this thing, I don't know why, but YouTube seems to really be pushing hour-long specials at the moment. Like mm. if you look up, a lot of people who put hour-long specials, even like ones that have no following, seem to get serious numbers behind them for some reason. Mm. I don't know why. I'm planning on kind of doing both, so... I'm going to, I've got that all kind of split up into yeah. basically like, it's basically like tracks on an album, right? Kind of 11 tracks that I'll put out over that, time. Yeah. And on top of that, then you have your kind of like minute long clips that go on TikTok and Instagram. Mm. I'm currently doing that. You guys were talking about video editing before. I'm trying to edit down my 50 minute special into 41 minute TikToks or whatever. Mm. Can I tell you the best hack? Mm. So recently YouTube studio, you've got YouTube studio on your yeah. phone. Yeah. So it's, it's it's done this thing now in your algorithm where you where you go to engagement um, and you can actually see like the audience at retention. Mm. I think it's measuring like it must be measuring your eyes because I don't know how they how they calculate it, but they they can show you where there's been like intense watching like over these certain like minute periods, and then from those ones are usually your best moments in your clip, right? Mm. Like like ninety percent. Yeah. Um, and it's so brilliant. How the fuck do they? How I don't know. It's like they're measuring some kind of eye movement. That's what I put it down to anyway, because it's like, how would you know if they're looking at their phone here, right? If the video has like X and X amount of hours watched, then how do you know? I wonder if Pornhub does that. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it does. Yeah. I think it has those same kind of like bars where it's like, this is where people drop off and come in. And <laughs> yeah. Mm. Literally <laughs> come in there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so if that's what you've been doing the clips from. Yeah, this week anyway, because they've only just they've just added this feature into the into YouTube Studio. See, free information we give you yeah, people. Because I was week. like Jack when you re because I can't rewatch our podcast. Basically, inside. I have to watch it and then mm. and then timestamp. That's a clip. That's a clip. That's a clip. It's brutal, isn't it? To have to listen back to a whole thing and be like, I like it. No, he likes yeah. it. He I wants like me. It. I, we, I, I, I'm. He's like Johnny Depp doesn't watch his own films, and I'm like, have you have you, have you seen some of Johnny Depp's films? <laughs> I like tell. Pirates of the yeah. Caribbean. No, Pirates of the Caribbean definitely some other shit. You go, come on, Johnny, watch read the script at least. Yeah, I wouldn't want to watch Sweeney Todd either. Yeah. Yeah, I've never the watched demon that barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we got in the car to go to Jim Jeffries one night, and like we're going to Newtown. It's a fucking busy night. It's uh, it's taking us like. This like, is this year for his last. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, That's Jack's the, uh, like, we're going to listen to the whole Monday like our episode on the way there and the way back, and then Jack's pretty deaf. Like you're pretty deaf in the car, so you fuck. And even when you play music here, you just fucking turn it up to ten, like max it out, and um, it's just it's just a fucking weird experience because you're hearing ourselves but we're there, we're there and then you're kind of like he gets so like anxious and he's like oh. yeah it's, fucking, it's like you're hearing yourself yeah but don't do a podcast if you don't like the sound of your own voice that might be a fair point yeah. i've gotten used to it like in terms of when when we sit there and have a look at things and stuff like that but when we're playing it like yeah to the point where the neighbors you know six streets over could probably hear it yeah. like you're like oh man this, this feels a bit um, sometimes when i watch the video i think i'm the only one who watches it <laughs> I'm just having <laughs> to take a hue there. Sorry, Hugh. Um, but yeah, no. Like, uh, do, do you watch yours, bar or do you listen to yours, bar podcast? Yeah, no. Yeah. I I should, but I don't. I I don't know my podcast. Like, uh, what's your podcast called, Tom? It's called Show Some Respect. Tom Whitcomb is talking. Yeah. Uh, it's basically just me. It's just me ranting for half an hour. I like the way. So on the like on the video clips I've seen videos of video clips me uh, on the little videos on YouTube. And you have like music, the music playing oh, underneath yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. It's a yeah, nice little I touch there. It's yeah, it's it's in. I think it makes the editing of it, like the clip editing, just sound a little bit smoother or whatever. Mm. I kind of saw it from Alex from the way he was doing his. Yeah. He had his little like yeah. rants at the camera and stuff. Um, I don't know. Like that's I. You spend so much time making content. You're like, is this like just detracting from the thing I'm trying to do? Mm. And I th find that hard to like. How much time do you spend on marketing versus how much time do you spend on doing the actual craft? And so I think especially like the the response to the special has been good and the clips that I've put out is actually my product, right? Like you put out the thing of you talking to the camera at your podcast and uh, will they come to a stand-up show? That's kind of all I want. That's everything else is like... Yeah, well, it's show. it's it's like you're trying to I think get, you said this get that to move over. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you, it's a brand. It's yeah. the Tom Wickham brand. It's a, it's a hot... Like a, it's not a nice way to think of yourself as I am a brand, but it's all part of the brand of you. For sure, so yeah. you know, and it needs to 
move over. You're just constantly building yours. No one's yeah. going to care about you like you're going to care about you. Mm, that's true. You said something really wise, Jack, and I think th- uh, this is true. When? Uh, <laughs> Fuck off, when? Uh, when you said that um, it takes like four like four clips that you like, that you see, so like of a podcast to then become invested into it or to become invested into like somebody. You reckon it's yeah. like four that you have to genuinely like laugh and like or w- and watch again, you know, really good solid clips yeah. and then you're, then you're in. Dude, cinema got me like that. Mm. I was just like... Oh, uh, what's this? You know what I mean? And uh, have a word got me like that. Yeah. I seen a clip with Jimmy Carr, and I was like, "Fuck, that's funny." Yeah, didn't watch it. Yeah, waited to see a couple more clips. Uh, yeah, it's just like, and then the same with Schultz. Like that's how I started watching that podcast. You it's know what uh, I mean? it's just so much. There is so much stuff. Yeah, out there. there's but so many podcasts. There's so many comedians. There's so many <laughs> bands. So much music. It's like. And and it's all so it's all equally accessible. Yeah. So you need to like for people to listen to my podcast, they need to actively choose not to listen to this podcast, Schultz's yeah. podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast. There is enough time though. There, oh, but there is. I find myself sometimes going, oh, I've listened to all my podcasts. Mm. Oh, I'm yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, genuinely. Okay. Because I find like there's only a handful of podcasts I listen to, mm. and mm. I'm like outside of that, I'm not really in the market for any new ones. Yeah, yeah. Um. But I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll add your one to it. I listen to Billy's like the day it comes out. Billy's is he mine, just kind of no, similar. No one tells a story like Billy Darcy. Yeah, he's. I mean, oh, I was like, what are you doing, you fucking pelican? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, if he's done like two hundred and something episodes. Yeah, like it's it's not surprising he's great at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, how many have you done on yours? Uh, Thirty-three. Oh, mate, it's fucking. Climbing that mountain quickly, aren't you, Tom? Yeah, well, you gotta, you just, that's the thing. Like when I, I've talked to comics, we're like, man, I don't know how you do it. It's like you turn a microphone on and you talk. Mm. Like there's no, if you want to do it, there's no excuse not to do it because yeah. you have everything you need. Yeah. Um, I, I say to him sometimes, we'll be on the phone and I'm like, you just need to start recording these conversations as well, man. Yeah. I feel like I'm having conversations for free yeah, outside exactly. of this. Where's, yeah, this is content. Yeah. But yeah. in terms of the My con- grandma called me and said, we're not doing this, <laughs> Rosie. <laughs> Unless we can monetize it. Yeah, and this, this conversation is brought to you by MeUndies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but don't you think in terms of content, though, like the, the, the if you take that full clip analogy, right, like, yeah. and then putting, putting out clips of your comedy and then putting out clips of your content... I suppose more people are going to come across it because your Instagram reels and the algorithm that way is going to push your shit. And then the same thing with TikTok. And then there's going to be, but you just, I think all roads lead back to one. So I think the more people that see you, all your different types of, you know, content, whether it be your podcast, whether it be your comedy, whether it be you just, you know, doing a rant or looking at your Twitter feeds and, um, you know, doing the reviews of that, like, you know, it's all going to help in the, in the, you you like you like you have to think about it like China in this way where you're there for the end game right you mm. the, the long the long drawn out yeah, game just, yeah yeah but the the thing is you need to make sure whatever you're showing people is 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 a fair representation of what you're trying to sell them right so if I make like an amazing video of me I don't know cooking or something they're not going to want to come to my stand up do you know what I mean. So it's like you can make the world's best sketch, but if that sketch is a totally different vibe to what you do mm. for your stand-up comedy, it's like, it's like I I would imagine there's I mean there's one thing to be said about awareness, right? Which is like just more people are aware of you, so they might come across your thing. But presumably, mm. if you guys were in a band together, loving this podcast doesn't mean they're going to want to go and buy your album. Yeah, and it depends. Yeah. Like I think it would help though. It would probably help because I guess more people are aware of you. Yeah, I think I think it would definitely help. Yeah, I'm because I'm sure that it wouldn't be like a starting at 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 zero. Do you know what I my, mean? It's my like, bands, the Grand Union, little plug. They uh, they are aware of what this can do for that band. Okay, you know what I mean. Uh, but has how long have you been doing this podcast for? Since January. Yeah, can I can I ask? Like, does this has this this like helped that? Um. Yeah, but it's kind of funny because. It's, you know, when you get, like, do you, have you been recognised before? Uh, once or twice. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Buddy Holly? Is that Buddy Holly? Yeah. Um, so, like, when when people come up and go, oh, you're, you're the podcast, and you do that. Po-. But they never say, like, West Underground. You go, oh, you do the podcast, don't mm. you? And I'm like, yeah. 
But I've been there with my band members and that pissed them off because they're like, oh, well, you know what I mean? It should be about the band. But I've been with him and someone's been like, oh, you're in the Grand Union, aren't you? Oh, really? And then I went, ah, sure. You know what I mean? But he's, he's like, come here, come here, come yeah. here. Say, say that again. Say, say that to <laughs> him. He was like, he was like, podcast's going to be way bigger than the band. But it, like, it's, <laughs> it's, they, they, they are aware of how this will help. The, the, the bigger this gets, the bigger that band will get. Yeah. You know what I mean? So oh. I think if you post any like like anything like you're the you're the focus right like mm. you know like I'm just trying to think of a good example of this I suppose I suppose if Mr Beast started a podcast tomorrow he would he would be he would be big because it'd be a certain number of people that would just watch anything he did yeah that's fair and they're liking you as a person right they're liking you like yeah I I I like I like like I like Rogan if Rogan went and did try to if, Rogan tried to put out a song. I'd go listen to it just to see. Yeah, that's fair. Have you ever smoked DMT, bro? <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's fucking aliens in the government, bro? That's what it'd be yeah, like. That's what it would be like, yeah. Hi right, guys, just a little break in the episode. Make sure you like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe, like and subscribe now. Subscribe. He'll put his number work there. Do that. Yeah. And there is a link below. So if you kind of go, if you click. If you click somewhere, you'll figure it out. I know you guys. You're smart. smart. So smart. I know the audience. We have the best smart, audience. The smartest. Good looking. The, be- oh, the best. Great genetics. And we're back. We're back. <laughs> Tom's just had the longest piss ever. Oh, I had to speak to Hamish's mum on the way out. Oh yeah. It's a bit of a reminder of this. That is wasn't not his the mom. most. That wasn't his mom. That's Hughes' oh, mum. Oh, Hughes' mum. Oh, yeah. so it's Hugh, It's Hughes' your house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm living with you. Oh, you're okay. Cool. There you go. Yes, got it. Wait. Who do you think, uh, like, honestly, who would you rather be your son? Be honest, Tom. Uh, gun to your head. Where's that gun? Where's so, that gun? Okay, so gun it's... to your head, Tom. Who would you rather... Who would you... I re- <laughs> Tom, Tom, who would you rather be your son? I reckon I would take a uh, film school student over musician between bands. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I feel like I only said that because you had a gun to your head. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, we've made that sufficiently awkward now. If there's any Americans watching, this isn't real, okay? Put your arms down, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Stay yeah. in school, not with the guns. <laughs> but I, I can't believe that if you go to an arcade, you spend, uh, you know, $60 on arcade do- dollary dues, right? Like, you will only earn enough ticket to get a plastic pistol that is not even a cap gun. Yeah, you should go into the dollar store on your way there, and then you already won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what were you playing? What was your what was the most successful ticket haul? Um, the basketball thing. Oh yeah, because I could just cheat. Like I could you literally just go around the. Then they had this machine on the corner, so my girlfriend would like throw me the balls, and then I'd just like, just drop them in. Well, you know, you can just like put your hand in front of the sensor, and it just counts. What? Up. Yeah, you don't actually need to use the balls at all. All right, we're this going isn't, to the this is knowledge I've needed to use for a good twenty years. Well, how did you, you figure this how out? How did you know that? Did you work in a theme park? No, I was just like I used to. I used to want to win tickets at an at at arcade from time to time. Does someone you look a bit like when you said that? No, you don't really. It's a bit. No, you wouldn't like that. Have you ever seen? <laughs> Who was it? Who was it? Have you? <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, Hugh, put this in. Uh, Adventureland. Have you ever seen Adventureland? Adventure Time. No, so Adventureland's much. got um. Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart. But there's a guy, <laughs> Jewish guy, Adventureland. Oh. They're saying he looks like Michael Cera. <laughs> no, that guy, that guy there, he's got the games, games, games on. Put that image in. Let's see. That does not. No. Yeah. But it was more when you said, you're much better looking, Tom, don't worry. It was Thank more you. when you said about you put your hand in front of the sensor and I was like, imagine you in a theme park. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, yeah, okay. Adventureland. Uh, oh, okay. Is that how do you know that anyway? How do you know that? I, I just think I remember going to arcades when I was a kid and seeing people do it. You're like, I'm going to hack this shit. Yeah, I'm going to get two plastic pistols. Yeah. Well, well, where's the second one going? You need them in Bankstown. <laughs> Do you um 
Do you have any like favorite comics on the scene at the minute? I think Luke Heggie is the best comic in Australia. Heggie, have you you yeah, heard of Heggie? Seen, yeah. I think Heggie's unreal. Like I'm such a huge fan. Uh, I think uh, John Crookshank's excellent as well. Uh, so, but these are all guys like well above my station. They've been they mm. were doing it for ten years before I started. Um, people that I am sort of like kind of more in love with. I think Alex is great. I think Billy's great. Mm. Um, I think uh, you know, there's another guy, good mate of ours, called Sam Bowden, who's excellent. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think who else is about. It's quite a good scene in Sydney. I'm finding at the minute. Mm. Sydney, like, there's a good. I mean, a good group of comics. I don't know necessarily if the scene is unbelievable, but. Is a good group of comics. I would say Sydney has the best comedy scene in the Southern Hemisphere. You know yeah. that kind of bullshit Australians. It's the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's, we're not up against a lot, yeah. but it's it's pretty much Sydney. I mean, I I guess Melbourne comics would claim that they uh, have the would would have the best. Oh, I mean, obviously, I, I should have said Sam Campbell is yeah. unreal, but yeah. like you know, he's he's like a. A Did you get to see his show when you were there? No, I didn't. I saw his one at the Enmore Theatre, yeah. which I think it was. he took a lot of that to the Enmore show, but I couldn't mm. get tickets. Is it there a big out. Queensland comedy thing? So Brisbane's huge, but the best Brisbane comics moved to Sydney. But the a lot of Australia's best comics start in Brisbane. So Cambo started in Brisbane. Becky Lucas started in Brisbane. Matt O'Kine started in Brisbane. Mm. There's a guy up there right now called Damien Power who's excellent. Um, yeah, Brisbane's got a really, really strong scene, but you have to kind of move oh, okay. to, to, to make it work. Mm. We had a funny guy from Brisbane on last Aaron. week. Uh, Gox? Yeah. Oh, Goxie, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think he's originally from Adelaide, isn't he? I th- he said he was from Brisbane. He was so, like, <laughs> he's, he's just funny, man. Yeah. You know, like, when people just give off that, like, like <laughs> even with his eyes, mm. like, just looking, I could see him looking about at things, and he just, he just made me laugh so much just by, by not doing a lot at yeah. all, really. I think there is that thing of, like, there are people uh, there are f- people who can be funny and there are funny people. Will Ferrell is mm. just funny to look at, yeah. isn't he? You know what I mean? Like, it, like the physical comedy thing of, like, it, it just sets you off. Yeah. Aaron's yeah. like that. Yeah, with that, with him, like, it was, you know when they say never, like, he, he was such a big thing when I was in, like, high school, right? Mm. And, like, to the point where we could remember all of his, like, little bits and stuff that he would, like, put out because we just thought it was funny as anything. And, like, when he came in here the other day, like, he was exactly how you want to meet, like, one of those, you know, somebody that you you liked, you know? Comics tend to be great people. Like, they just... I've never really had a... I used a, to think that until today. Oh. <laughs> well, there we go. Well, it's been great to be here, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I'm just I haven't had many disappointing experiences yeah. with comics and uh I've like I say similar to Gox I don't really I don't really remember watching a lot of Gox stuff but like Frenchy and Neil Kolhatka mm. and those guys that I've worked with quite a lot now and they're all lovely guys they're all What's, really um friendly Geordie's like I never met him I would like to Me too Yeah um cuz he's not really a comic anymore he's like a journalist mostly right mm. Yeah like he's a comedic journalist, I guess. But uh, he will still put out the. He, doesn't he do like tours though? I think so, but I think a lot of it is like social commentary with some jokes chucked mm, in. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if his show would be my thing. See, I, I, I don't think I've met a comedian or thought he's a knobhead or like she's. A, you know what I mean? I, but like with musicians, I think because like musicians hide more behind that veil of. Mm. My music is my art. This is how I get. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think like a lot of musicians I meet aren't emotionally developed human beings. That's interesting. Sorry, guys. I'm yeah. probably one of them. Yeah. But like, whereas with comedians, I feel like because you're constantly, it's you and your material. Mm. And I think you just get humbled a lot. Mm. Yeah. Like I think you, especially early on, you have to come to the terms of the fact you're not very good. Yeah. Uh, and I think that sticks with you. I think you always remember, and it's also to your point about like there's no, you don't have the veil of like, well, they didn't like me. They, it's not that they didn't like me, they didn't like the band, mm. they didn't like the songs, where it's like, no, no, they, did, they, they fucking hated you. Mm. Uh, and I think that does kind of just make you a little bit more chill, chill. or something. Yeah. Do you, um, did you ever meet uh, uh, Isaac Butterfield? No, I've not. Okay. Yeah. I just wondered what he was like in. in in person. I don't know where he started. I don't know if he was a Perth guy or what. Like, I, I don't know. I'd never heard of him before I knew he was, like, a big deal. So. Yeah. Mm. Someone told me Newcastle, but I think he lives up in Queensland now. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I would like to... Uh, who else? There's. There, is there any others Sh- that are... Shooter high? Williamson's a big one. Yeah. What happened? He, he's... Did they... Is he cancelled? What happened to him? Something happened, right? Yeah, something happened with some ex-girlfriends. And I think, uh, I think it was... I think from the sound of thing, it was like a horrible breakup that then got kind of yeah. out of hand. I mm. don't know. Um, I think he was having a bit of a tough go, but I think... I don't know what he's doing now. He got dropped by his management and stuff. <laughs> hey, um, you could go with them, though. There you go. I could be sure for the next loosest <laughs> Aussie bloke ever. There's, there's an opening <laughs> on the roster. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Thank you very much for coming in anyway, Tom. Like, uh, it's been... Uh, we've been excited to get you in. Oh, yeah, okay, I appreciate that. Especially, Thanks, like... To watch that special and then be like, oh, I'll be coming in on Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah cool. You said something really nice. Um, but it was funny because you were like, we did it on Zoom. And you went, oh, no, I've seen your studio. Fuck, I want to go there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I said, that's the boys. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Studio's oh, sick. This is so cool. Oh, it's, it's cool I know how hard it is to make things look nice mm. visually. It's so tough. So I appreciate the amount of effort you guys have put into this. It's really oh, impressive. It was all me on my own. I thought that. Yeah. It was all these hands. These hands, but yeah, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you for having me. Um, I can't wait till you get a huge deal on British television. Me neither. It's gonna be good. It's yeah. gonna be good, and I'll watch it on UK TV in ten years. <laughs> yeah, that's when they get things. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank, thank you, you, Hamish. Love you. Bye.